Hello everyone and welcome to Mathematics School You. This is video 3 in the series of 10 amazing J Advanced previous year questions. In this video, I am taking a question from J Advanced 2022 paper 2 from the topic limits, which I will be solving in three different methods. Hence, we will be looking at the question from three different angles. So without any delay, let's start the question. So here is the question that I will be solving. The question says that uh, if beta is equals to limit x tends to 0, e raised to the power x cube minus 1 minus x cube power 1 by 3 plus 1 minus x square power 1 by 2 minus 1 sine x whole divided by x into sine square x, then the value of 6 beta is. Well, basically, the question says that we need to get the value of beta. That means evaluate this limit, right? We have to evaluate this limit. After that, 6 beta can easily be calculated. So, Charlie, let's start with the solution. What we have to do is, as I told you, I'm going to tell you three different methods here. All the three methods may one step is common. What is that step? You have to rewrite the question as limit x tends to 0, e per x cube minus 1 minus x cube power 1 by 3 plus 1 minus x square power 1 by 2 minus 1 sin x whole divided by x into sin square x whole divided by x into sin square x okay fine what we have to do is in the first step i'm going to divide the denominator sin square x by x square and multiply it with x square. The reason being because x is tending towards 0, sine square x upon x square can be replaced with 1. I can throw it outside the limit sign and can write it as 1. So I'm going to just remove it from rest of the expression and will convert my question to an easier form. Basically, we don't like sine square or 10 or any trigonometric function in denominator. So we always use this step wherever possible. So I'm going to replace it with 1 and the denominator will now become only x cube. Now we will split the question or we can say that now we will start with three different methods. Starting with the very first one, which is L'Hopital's rule. So my first approach of solving the question is L'Hopital's rule. Well, this is most of the students' favorite method. But uh, after completing this question, you will come to know that every time blindly, we should not apply the L'Hopital rule. So just wait till the end. Let's see how we can solve the question without using L'Hopital as well. Well, I'm starting with L'Hopital as the first method. First of all, you have to go and check the form of the limit. So when x is tending towards 0, you can check that the numerator turns out to be 0. Why? Because the first term will become 1, second will become 1. So first and second will cancel each other. The third term is 0. So we have 0 and denominator x cube with or definitely it's going to be 0 upon 0 form. That means L'Hopital is applicable. Applying the L'Hopital rule here gives me limit x tends to 0. Numerator e power x cube ka derivative. So see I have written the derivative of e power x cube. Then I'm going to write down the derivative of second term which will be 1 by 3. 1 minus x cube whole power 2 by 3 in the denominator and the numerator minus x cube car derivative minus 3x square. Coming to the third term, sin x car derivative cos x multiplied by root over 1 minus x square minus 1 and then coming to the last term or we can say that the last term of the numerator that we will be getting sin x as it is the derivative of this expression which will be 1 by 2 root over 1 minus x square multiplied by minus 2x into sin x. Coming to denominator, it is nothing but 3x square. Denominator is 3x square. Now I'm going to split the limits 1 by 1 karke I'm going to solve it. So just look at the first term, this divided by 3x square. Okay, so let's write it over here. The question will convert to the form. Limit x tends to 0. The first term is only e power x cube. Coming to the second one, you can say that we'll be left out with plus sign. 1 upon 3 times 1 minus x cube power 2 by 3. 
Then coming to the third term, we have cos x and this one. So I'm going to rewrite it as cos x. 1 minus x square. That means I'm just rationalizing this term, which will give me 1 minus x square minus 1. Denominator, root over 1 minus x square plus 1 multiplied by 3x square. And the last term, minus 2. 1x got cancelled. Sin x divided by 3x. And here we have 2 root over 1 minus x square. After splitting each of these terms, you can see that we can now write down the limit as first term 1. Second term plus 1 by 3. Coming to the third term, so you can see that this 1 and x square will get cancelled. Putting x equals to 0 will make cos x 1. This term will convert to 2 and we'll get a negative sign in the numerator. So we will be getting minus 1 by 6 over here. Coming to the last term, sin x upon x. This limit is 1. So we are just left out with 1 by 3 with a negative sign. 1 by 3 got cancelled. The value of the limit is 5 by 6, which is nothing but beta. And this implies, as the question says, we need to calculate 6 beta. So 6 beta turns out to be 5. So this is the answer for the question. The question is not at all lengthy. Using L'Hopital is also comfortable here. But let us solve the same question using some other approach. I am going to solve the question now using method 2. For method 2, I will be going by series expansion. Method 2 may we will be using the series expansion, especially the series expansion of e power x and sin x, which are involved in the question. So, chale, let's start with the question using series expansion. So, I am using here series expansion method. What is that method according to that? Beta is nothing but limit x tends to 0. e power x cube. So, e power x cube ka expansion I am writing. 1 plus x cube upon 1 factorial plus x cube ka square upon 2 factorial and so on. Coming to the next term, the next term that we have is 1 minus x cube per 1 by 3. So binomial series expansion will be used here. 1 minus 1 by 3 into x cube. Then we have plus. 1 by 3 into 1 by 3 minus 1 upon 2 factorial x cube ka square. Which ultimately gives me 1 by 9 x power 6 and so on till infinity. Coming to the third term. So writing the third term. So let us do one thing. Upon x cube we have. As you remember I told you that one common step is there for all the three method. And in that common step we made the denominator x cube. So I am writing x cube here. But two more terms of the numerator are there. Now I'll be writing those two. So we have plus uh, one factor sin x. So sin x ka expansion I'm writing. x minus x cube by 3 factorial plus x power 5 upon 5 factorial and so on. Multiplied by root over 1 minus x square minus 1. So I'm going to expand again binomially. 1 minus x square power 1 by 2. So it will become 1 minus 1 by 2 x square then we have the next term half that is 1 by 2 into 1 by 2 minus 1 upon 2 factorial which ultimately gives us minus 1 upon 8 x power 4 and so on till infinity whole divided by x cube and one more thing in the numerator we do have 1 minus x square power 1 by 2 minus 1 so that minus 1 i am writing here now you can see that this one and this one will get cancelled. I am going to handle the whole question as limit of this expression plus limit of this expression. If both are finite, we don't have any issues. We can add them together and get the final answer. So let us proceed and write this is equals to limit x tends to 0. Coming to this first voila term, here 1 and 1 will cancel each other. I am going to club all the terms of x cube together. Because denominator is x cube, any term of degree more than 3 in the numerator will tend towards 0 as x is going towards 0. So I am not worried about higher degrees of x. I will just be concentrating on 
the coefficient of x cube. So coefficient of x cube, what we are getting is 1 plus 1 by 3 x cube and so on and so on. You can say that what we are getting is x bar 6 ka term. So I'm just writing its coefficient as sum a <coughs> x power 6 and so on divided by x cube. Similarly, coming to the second wala expression. In this expression, again, I'm interested only in clubbing the terms of x cube together. So all the terms of x cube together. So I'll be getting x cube ka term 1 because of the product of these two. So let's write here, we will be getting it as minus 1 by 2. Any other approach or any other term that we'll be getting for x cube? So no, because now if x multiplied by x power 4, it will become x power 5. Here we have x cube, but no constant term in the second factor. So we are not going to get x cube once again. <coughs> so that's it. This is the coefficient of x cube. After that, maybe some coefficient of x power 5 we will be getting and so on. Whole divided by x cube. Now, since x is tending towards 0, as I told you, my answer will turn out to be 1 plus 1 by 3 from here because rest of the terms are going towards 0. Coming to the second one, only minus half will be left out. Here again, my answer becomes 1 minus 1 by 6, that is 5 by 6. This is nothing but beta. The answer that is to be given is 6 beta, which is equals to 5. So here is the answer. We have used here the method of series expansion to get the answer. So now let us go to method number three. Here I'm going to connect this question with the standard limits that we already know. What is that limit or what is that approach of solving the question? Now let us see. So coming to method number three. Method number three is connecting it with standard limits. Connecting with whatever you have learned as i told you in the previous video also whatever you are learning keep trying to connect it with the questions that you saw so connecting it with standard limits standard limits what standard limits we are talking about here i'm talking about the standard limits let me just show you one limit x tends to zero e per x minus one upon x is one Second, the limit that I will be using here is going to be limit x tends to a x bar n minus a bar n upon x minus a is n into a power n minus 1. And third is limit x tends to 0 sin x upon x that we were using in the previous two method as well. So I'm just going to make use of these small standard limits for solving my question. So again, let us see how we can handle the question alternatively. So third method may, I'm going to rewrite the question. Limit x tends to 0. This is e per x cube minus 1 minus x cube power 1 by 3 plus 1 minus x square power 1 by 2 minus 1 multiplied by sin x whole divided by x cube. So this was the question. After converting the denominator, this is the uh, we can say the first step of each of the three methods. So now in the third method, what I'm going to do is just going to connect my question with these limits. Keeping in mind that e power x, whatever you're writing here, the same thing should be written here. Both of them must be same and they must tend towards zero. Okay, so I'm just rewriting. Just observe carefully how I'm writing my question. e power x cube minus 1 whole divided by x cube. I'm just taking care of or I'm just taking these two terms which are e power x cube minus 1 upon x cube. But see I have subtracted 1 so I'll have to add 1. I'm going to add 1. So now I'm going to the second term taking the negative sign common 1 minus x cube power 1 by 3 minus 1. I hope it's clear that this minus and this minus will adjust this additional one which I have written here. Coming to the denominator, I need to write down x cube. Now see how I'm writing x cube in the denominator. 
this will become 1 minus x cube and minus 1. But I have created minus x cube here. So I'm adjusting that with putting one more negative sign in front of it. That means I'm writing here the plus sign. Coming to the next term. Now the next term that means over here I'm going to concentrate. After looking at sin x, I'm going to club it with 1x in the denominator as x is tending towards 0. But what about this? 1 minus x square power 1 by 2 minus 1 4 divided by 1 minus x square minus 1. I have written only x square and that too with a negative sign because that is a negative sign. So let's change the sign over here to adjust that negative sign. Adjusted this negative sign. Now multiplied by we have sin x and one more x because total in the denominator I want x cube. So yes, we have that. Now what we are going to do? As I told you, I'm going to make use of the standard limits. So let us make use of that. e power x upon x when x is tending towards 0. The important thing is both these are same and both of them are tending towards 0. That's why this limit will go towards 1. What about this one? You can see that the second limit says that when x is tending towards a. So whatever variable you have written here, it must tend towards this constant value. So I have written the variable here 1 minus x cube. And when x is tending towards 0, this variable is tending towards the constant 1. Upon 1 minus x cube minus a. So it is something like x power n here, x power n minus a power n upon x minus a. Now since it is same as this second standard limit, I am going to write my answer here as this limit will convert to n into a power n minus 1. Now since a is 1, I can write it as only 1 by 3. Similarly, coming to this term, this is also x power n minus a power n upon x minus a. Let me explain it once again. 1 minus x square, if you take it as capital X, then this will look like x power 1 by 2 minus 1 upon capital X minus 1. But if you are taking 1 minus x square as capital X, and because small x is tending towards 0, this x will tend towards 1. So my question will actually look like 1, this thing. Right? So limit x tends to 1, x power 1 by 2 minus 1 upon x minus 1. It is nothing but this standard limit. Once again, I'm going to make use of it and will write my answer, the limit for this term as n into a power n minus 1. And coming to the last one, sin x upon x, which is nothing but 1. Now let us add them all together. We have all the values. We can write it as 1 plus 1 by 3 minus 1 by 2 which ultimately gives me the answer once again as 5 by 6. This is beta and hence the answer for the question 6 beta turns out to be 5. So see, we have solved the question, all the three methods, although are good and not very lengthy, but always try to connect the things which you have already learned. The method 3 that I have used here is actually a method which helps us in many different questions where you can make use of the standard limit to reduce the calculation part. See, I have not calculated here as much as I have done it in the previous two parts, right? So let's end the video here. See you in the next video. Meanwhile, don't forget to like the video, share it with your fellow groups and friends. Do subscribe the channel for more such interesting questions. Happy learning. Bye-bye.